I'm very pleased to welcome you to this IIEA webinar. My name is Barry Colfer, and I'm the Director of Research here at the Institute. We're delighted to be joined today by Dr. Giuseppe Porcaro, who is Head of Outreach at Bruegel, the renowned economic policy think tank based in Brussels. And Giuseppe has been generous enough to take time out of his busy schedule to speak to us, which we greatly appreciate. Giuseppe is going to discuss the current political landscape in Italy and will assess the prospects for the new Italian government and what it may mean for the politics of Italy and indeed for the European Union. Giuseppe is going to speak for up to about 20 minutes. After this, we'll then engage in a bit of a discussion between myself and our researcher, Dara Lawler, before going to the questions and answers with you, our audience. You'll be able to join the discussion as ever using the questions and answer function on Zoom, which you should see on your screen. Please feel free to send your questions in throughout the session as they occur to you as ever, and we'll um, come to them once Giuseppe has finished his presentation and once you've gone through our short conversation. You can also participate in the discussion on Twitter using the handle at IIEA. A reminder that today's presentation and Q&A are both on the record. I'll now formally and briefly introduce Giuseppe and, and hand over to him. Dr. Giuseppe Porcaro leads outreach activities for the Bruegel think tank, including as regards communications, media events, and media events and publications, as well as membership relations. Dr. Porcaro has been at Bruegel since 2014, and until December 2019 served as head of communications and events. Dr. Porcaro holds a PhD in Geography of Development from the University of Naples, L'Orientale. Giuseppe was sec gen of the European Youth Forum between 20, 2009 and, two, and 2014, and previously worked at the World Bank in Kosovo and Paris, as well as at the European Office of the World Organization of the Scout Movement, which is actually pretty cool. Giuseppe, thank you very much again for being with us, and I hand you the floor. Well, Barry, thank you so much for this introduction. And of course, it's my pleasure and honor to speak uh, uh, with, with, with you. Uh, the Institute of International and European Affairs uh, in Ireland. And uh, uh, well, um, I would be happy to share a very broad, uh, and let's say general uh, introduction about uh, this, this landscape uh, that is quite uh, complicated sometimes to understand from outside of Italian politics and uh, what has been going on uh, so far with the uh, the recent elections and the different events that led to the uh, formation of, of the Italian government uh, just uh, two days ago. And uh, just one day ago, uh, just to remind the timeline, uh, we we had the, the government uh, um, obtained uh, um, the trust, as we, we, as we so to say, like uh, there was a positive vote at the, at the second chamber, uh, completing the process for having uh, it fully, fully entrusted and operational. Uh, so uh, what I do uh, today, um, I think that uh, um, it's going to be the, the most interesting part that I would like to, uh, to hear from you are definitely the questions, because obviously, uh, uh that's that's where curiosities and and where analysis can go a little bit deeper uh also for me just just as a disclaimer um i think that you will get a, a very specific point of view on italian politics because um i'm italian but as uh, barry has mentioned i've been living abroad for for quite some time even though I still have uh, very strong ties, I, I've been, uh, let's say, involved into uh, the Italian uh, environment, especially Italian politics, for for a while. While while uh, in the mid two thousands, I was uh, involved into youth politics. You, you mentioned the European Youth Forum. That that was the, the during that time I was involved into the um, makings and the creation of the Italian National Youth Councils. And why, why I'm mentioning this at the beginning, uh, it's not just to, to give you a little bit of a flavor of, of my biography, but it's because uh, at that time, the uh, Italy didn't have an, a national youth council. And uh, together with a group of associations and political parties, we, we set this up together. And this was the time where uh, Giorgia Meloni was the Ministry of Youth in the Berlusconi government. So uh, just to say that, that that was my first uh, encounter with with Georgia back uh, back uh, back in, in those days. We're so speaking about 2006, more or less, 
um, so so quite a long time ago, but 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 it, it marked uh, somehow in terms of generation. So to say, like I'm from the same generation of, of Giorgia Meloni, and somehow I come from from a very different story. And you mentioned the World Organization of the Scouts movement, but somehow also very similar. We are coming from uh, from uh, from a kind of uh, uh, political education, political experience, which is being passing through the, the, the what, what we call the school or the uh, educational school of, of youth organizations, being them political or, 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 or educational, nonpartisan, uh, there is something in common in, in, the, in this. And I, I'll tell you more afterwards, because I think this is an element that shouldn't be forgotten when, when we analyze the, um, the work of the new prime minister. Um, but coming back to, to my specific point of view, and that's which has limitations. So since 2006, I, I've not been, uh, 2006, 2007, I've not been uh, in Italy as a permanent resident. So my view has been a little bit in and out, which is an interesting point of view. It's not completely, I would say, um, an expert point of view or a foreigner point of view, because I've been keeping having uh, close ties with, with, with Italy. In my current role at Bruegel, as I'm membership, part of the, uh, I mean, I'm coordinating the relations with our members and uh, uh, part of the membership is, uh, is state members. So uh, Italy is one of the state members. So I've been, I've been dealing with, with the, the Italian government for, for, the past, uh, for the past years, the, the different Italian governments for the past years. So I've been keeping having uh, an eyes in, but also this kind of eyes out by being in Brussels. So, so that's what I will try to give to you, this kind of perspective that is um, a little bit in, a little bit out. It might be different from a perspective from someone that is sitting in Rome at the moment, or someone sitting uh, in, in, in Naples, or so, someone sitting in Milan, uh, so to say, because the way Italian politics is seen is very much territorial and is very much linked to where you you are, uh, and and that's something that maybe abroad uh, can be uh, rarely understood uh, in terms of, uh, of of things. But first things first, I want to give you uh, just an overview about where uh, and how did we got to the elections. Um, I mean, I know you are an informed audience, so maybe maybe you you know all these very well. But it's it's very good to have a summary and 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 have a recap about how did we got there on the 25th of, of September with the elections. Then what happened during the elections and having a look uh, again to the, to the results and what do they mean? And then this phase that has been opening up after the elections and let's say that, it, that has been closed this week, which has been the moment of forming the government. And then what's going on uh, from, from Monday on, or like from, from today on, which means uh, what, what to be expected from the action of this government, what does it mean for Europe, as Barry has said, and so on. So I'll, I'll try to, to, to summarize and have uh, these four, four elements. Uh, as I say, this is going to be more sketches than uh, very in-depth conversation because we don't have so much time. And this will uh, will uh, need as Italian politics is uh, is like a melodrama or or a big soap opera or a Brazilian telenovela. So this this would need uh, not one Netflix series, but you know, twelve seasons at least of of, of Netflix uh, uh, series. So we are going to condense all this into into a, a short uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, summary instead. <laughs> so um, also as a disclaimer, once again, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, this is really a, a very informal uh, talk I want to have. I'm, I'm not really uh, prepared the speech or whatsoever. So um, I apologize in case there are some stuff that might not be completely, um, you know, uh, coherent with each other. Or if I jump from one thing to another, Please be free afterwards to ask questions. So first, of, first things first. How did we get there? I mean, uh, uh, we 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 had a very turbulent time in in Italian politics, and and one could say uh, Italian politics is always turbulent. But uh, if you look at uh, four four and a half four four years ago when we had our last general elections. Uh, we had a particular 
um, institutional uh, um, uh, de de deadlock uh, at that time uh, because uh, we had a parliament basically with no clear majority and uh, uh, what happened as a as a consequence of this uh, has been two subsequent governments held by the same uh, person, Giuseppe Conte, the Five Star Movement back then was the main, the main party uh, that, uh, that was um, coming out of the elections. Uh, very specular governments. The first government uh, hardly found a majority and it was uh, um, a mix of uh, what back then were dubbed as the main populist forces of of the of the Italian Parliament, the Five Star Movement and uh, and and the League, the the Northern League, uh, and um, and this led to uh, let's say short-lived government, one year, one year, and something uh, between Salvini and, and and Conte. Salvini is the is the leader of the of the League. Uh, with the very, it was a very strange animal. Uh, we we've been calling it the yellow and um, and green uh, government. Why it was a strange animal? Because uh, it, it tried to combine a party which uh, both parties were very populist and dubbed uh, at, at European level as anti anti euro, anti euro base, and so on. But the reality is a little bit more complicated than that. But basically, they tried to merge uh, something that is a very pro-business, conservative uh, um, court uh, from the north of the country, which was which is represented by the League, with the Five Star Movement, which has been always an anti-system, uh, pro-small medium uh, SMEs, uh, but also very much um, pro, uh, let's say. Uh, measures which uh, which, which would uh, try to uh, to ease the life of of, uh, of the poor people uh, in in the country. That's simplifying, basically, you had the mix between uh, the champions of the, uh, the, the 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 northern the northern in, in industrialism uh, and and the champions of the southern assist, what, what we call assistentialism, basically. Uh, uh the, the the idea that that uh, money should be given for example with with the citizen in the universal citizen income um to to everyone uh so basically really two completely different approaches when it comes to economics uh the only thing that made them in common was probably the fact that they were uh anti anti system they were the opposition and and this didn't didn't really last very long. And what happened afterwards was uh, uh, what we say a completely switch in the in, in the orientation of the government. So basically, Five Star Movement makes an alliance with the the Democratic Party, which is the the main centrist uh, leftish uh, uh, party that that we have that we have in Italy uh, for something that uh, looked like. Uh, as a transformation of the Five Star Movement itself. And that's very important to, to understand because the Five Star Movement has been having this, uh, this switch from being the, the anti-system, anti-system uh, um, anti uh, party, more and more going, converging into the center of the, of the political arena and more and more becoming a systemic party. So that that's why um, that's what I say to a lot of uh, of commentators and people from outside, which uh, cannot really understand what, what has been going on in the past five years. Like, but like the Five Star Movements were like the the the, the gilets jaunes, or like they were like the complete crazy people on the party and so on. But then all of a sudden changes. Yes, they they completely changed, and and the the, the switching point has been obviously COVID. Uh, you should not forget that Italy has had the worst COVID uh, uh, wave, uh, uh, one of the worst in the world, not just of Europe. And this has been really marking the, the way the government, this government of Five Star and, and PD has been acting uh, with a lot of responsibility, but also taking a lot of heat. Of course, this has been a huge, a huge, a huge hit for, 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 for the country. And... Uh, with uh, with a lot of opposition on, on especially on 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 the right wing side, building up uh, um, 
you know, on, on people that, that were against the vaccines, people that were against the, uh, the measures, the, 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 the lockdown measures, but also other measures and so on. So basically, we, we, we arrived to a point uh, where uh, there is high pitch drama uh, back, back this winter, uh, where the Five Star Movement, uh, which had this soul of anti-system, but then being co-opted in the system, being responsible and so on, basically uh, started to have very, I mean, I'm simplifying here, but huge, big internal struggles. And these internal struggles uh, ev evolved into a split of, 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 uh, of one part led by the, the then Ministry of uh, 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 Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Luigi Di Maio, uh, from Giuseppe Conte uh, side, Giuseppe Conte, which was the Prime Minister at the time. Uh, this this big split, uh, the, let's say, was was undergoing and and basically uh, had had two moments. The first moment was the actual fall of the of the of the Conte government, mainly caused actually by the the other parties which were supporting, especially Matteo Renzi, who, who didn't wanted this party because we are now COVID finished. The, the big the big unity, let's say unity moment as uh, finishes. Uh, and, and that moment is pivotal to understand what happened afterwards, because that's the moment where uh, the next generation EU plans are starting to be made. There is potentially, potentially there is money flowing in Italy. There is the potential that this current government, uh, PD, PD five star, which had to take so much responsibility and hit during, during the COVID, could have bared also some fruits and some, let's say, positive uh, outlook towards towards the electorate. This is the moment where the 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 the, um, the government split and uh, and and goes uh, uh, back into a crisis, and that's when we get uh, um, Draghi uh, with this uh, very large, uh, almost gross coalition government, which uh, which was led until until February. Uh, which again gets split because of uh, an internal fight between between the five five star movements. This is really like a very quick and dirty explanation about uh, the facts ongoing and how we arrived to uh, the fall of the Draghi government uh, and and the elections on the twenty fifth of, of September. Now, what has to be said in 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 this um, in this set is that. Uh, uh, what has to be said is that uh, uh, in these uh, in these circumstances, uh, uh, first of all, um, we had a lot of internal fights everywhere. So Italy arrives to these elections with everyone basically uh, having problems because they were not expecting such an election to take place at that specific moment in time. So that's the first thing that uh, everyone was not ready for it. Especially those that were doing uh, were in the government. So especially everyone that was inside the the, the, the coalition government, uh, which is everyone except Giorgio Meloni and uh, the Fratelli d'Italia. So you can already imagine that we arrive to this scenario with uh, a potential winner of the, uh, over there because uh, a lot of you know, a lot of very uh, complicated choices have had to be made. Uh, a lot of, uh, 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 you know, even even the Lega Nord, which was uh, very much this anti-system movement and so on, had to be co-opted with the Draghi government. So everyone was tamed in the political system except Giorgio Meloni. So from from a purely electoral point of view, uh, that 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 sounds quite a no-brainer that she won the elections. The, the, the other thing that I want to, to say in this scenario building is that um, obviously when, when you have snap elections, because those were like snap elections, uh, the, the big thing that you had to consider is that in Italy, the electoral system um, uh, gives a premium only to uh, uh, electoral alliances. So you have this, this, you know, this scenario, you already had Fratelli d'Italia on the right side, which was the only opposition party. But also you had, let's say, a smart 
logic of the center right at that stage, which was we had two parties at the government, Lega and Forza Italia, uh, representing Lega represented the way of saying uh, we are crazy because Matteo Salvini is crazy. Uh, uh, I mean, like uh, admitted, <laughs> admittedly, you know, but can work with someone like uh, like like Draghi. So showing international investors and so on that this is a government, I mean, this is a political force that actually can be co-opted into a government and, and not doing too much harm. Berlusconi represented the, the very old moderate kind of, of right wing, pro-European and so on, which everyone thought it was completely disappeared, but actually we'll see the election results uh, change a bit this, this outlook. So you had two parties inside the government and then you had one party in, in the coalition. So they could really catch uh, by saying we, we, are, again, we are not together in the government, the Draghi government, but we are still an alliance. This was a very, very old animal if you think about it from, from a political point of view, but very smart because they catched votes on one side and they catched uh, uh, the votes on the other side, basically of the spectrum. On the other side, the, the, the people that were governing so far, the Five Star Movement and, and the Democratic Party, entrenched themselves uh, instead of, of forming an alliance. Uh, there's been quite high pitched drama over the summer about uh, uh, who would have been together in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the elections. And as usual with Italian, let's say progressive centric uh, uh, left ground, uh, they've been splitting and splitting even more. You had, uh, you had instead of, uh, of saying we need to make a, a, co a common front, we had them splitting between the Five Star and the PD because of the Five Star being accused of the ones that have been making the fall of the Draghi government, the PD entrenched themselves saying we will never, we will never ally with, with them. Now the second part was uh, with, uh, let's say, the more moderate like uh, Calenda and, and Renzi, Matteo Renzi, and 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 and, uh, and Calenda were two people that uh, used to be in, in the Democratic Party. They split out of the Democratic Party, and and now formed what they call the third the third uh, poll, uh, which in their mind should be some sort of more centrist Nick Clegg uh, Macron kind of style of thing in their in their mind. You know, uh, so they, do, they they wanted to create their own shop. And, and they, 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 they split it from the PD. So obviously we arrived on the 25th of September with a situation which was quite clear on the ground. There was no surprise whatsoever that the, 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 the right-wing coalition would have uh, won. Uh, that, was, that was a matter of fact. Uh, the, the you know on the on the beginning of August when the, the electoral alliances were done, it was quite clear this, this, this was a done deal. Uh, which put, and, and here I go with a, a bit on, on the electoral uh, campaign itself, put Giorgia Meloni uh, as a winning horse in a very comfortable situation. And that's where I would like to spend a bit of, of words about Georgia. Uh, instead of doing a completely uh, um, uh, fighting campaign, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the the main uh, the, the the main critiques to her abroad have been saying she's she's a radical she's uh, far right she's uh, um, she's anti system she's friend with Orban she's friend with uh, uh, Marine Le Pen and you name it all all, all all these things which are anathema in the in the let's say democratic uh, Europe. Uh, she has been playing her card very, very cool. She has, me she has been making a campaign which was completely very soft. Uh, she has preparing the ground for becoming the prime minister, basically. Now, coming to the elections, these were no, 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 no uh, big, uh, as I said before, they were, these were no, uh, no surprise. Uh, so we basically had uh, um, uh, a right-wing, center-right, as they keep calling it center right in Italy. And this is something that I guess that you might have a lot of questions on. It's very important. They keep calling themselves a center right. 
uh, with 43.79% of, uh, of shares on the, um, on the lower chamber, which is, uh, let's say, the, the, the largest and the most representative one. And, and you have uh, basically uh, Fratelli d'Italia and Giorgia Meloni with 26%. Uh, you get uh, Lega with 8.7%, uh, which is a really, really bad result for Lega, like really, really bad. Uh, they were at the European elections, I think that they were at 20 plus or something like this in just in, in, in a few years ago. And you have Forza Italia, which was the big surprise. Everyone thought that Forza Italia would have completely disappeared from the landscape, like maybe barely doing the 3%, which 3% is the, the minimum that you need to get in order to get into the, to get into the, um, into the parliament. They, they got basically at, at the same level of Lega. They got, they got more than 8%. Um, so that, that's for the center right. And then on the, on the center left, uh, so to say, uh, there has been quite a disaster. I mean, the, the, the Democratic Party uh, got less than 20%. They got at 19%. This is a really, really a problematic thing that if you want to do the analysis of what's going on on the left side, we need to spend some, some, some words on that. Um, the Greens uh, don't really exist in Italy. That's also an anomaly of the, of the political system. Uh, they are very, very small party and so on. They had a coalition with the, 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 the more left uh, party, which has also taken several configurations at every election. So this coalition got more than 3%, which, uh, which is a surprise because in the previous um, parliament, it, they didn't even got in. So that's, that's, that's a surprise and interesting element. Uh, of the stuff, but that's basically what it is, 26%, which is uh, all in all, very, very low result. And then we got the Five Star Movement, which were the first party in, uh, in, in, in the previous elections, uh, they got at 15%, 15.4. Now, most commentators from outside would say the Five Star Movement lost the elections because they were the first party and now they are 15%. But if you've been hearing every single report of the elections the day after, the week after, Five Star Movement was, was deemed to be one of the winners of the elections. And this is like the weird things about the way Italian politics and reporting is made. Because uh, all it was based, it was based not on the previous electoral results, but on the polls of like six months before. The polls six months before gave to Five Star Movement less than 10%. And then by having 15% uh, made uh, the strategy of Giuseppe Conte, which basically said, okay, I'm going to do my own outlet. I'm now going back with my, uh, let's say, more populist uh, agenda, but really also more progressive and more left-wing comparing to, to the Democratic Party, which was like the party of Draghi, let's put it like that, of the Draghi agenda. That's what that was, was the buzzword in, in, uh, in the electoral campaign, the Draghi agenda. Basically, basically got a 15%. Uh, and then you have the third poll, uh, as I was saying before, those wannabe Macron, Macronistas um, of Azione Italia Viva and so on, which got 7.7%, which is not bad, but it's not the big exploit which they were like thinking before. But they exist. It means that this, this is they exist. And um, it's a very important element of what I would say uh, about this, the future scenarios in a second. So that's what we, 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 we got at the election. So not, not big surprise. Now, uh, what, what has been a surprise on, on the comments outside Italy about, about this? What has been a surprise is that uh, a lot of people has been dub dubbing this as uh, the big wing of the far right, which nominally it is, because Fratelli d'Italia looks like, uh, uh, I mean, it is, it is a, a right wing party. But there are two elements. If you take the uh, overall result of the coalition, which is 43%, what I was saying before, and you take the results of the center-right coalition as a wall on the previous elections and when Berlusconi won last time back in 2011, if I'm not wrong, um, those are actually uh, more or less the same of or less than what they were. 
So basically the theory goes that, uh, uh, and, and the reading of this goes that the, the, the votes that went on, on that side of the political spectrums are more or less the same. And also, if you look at the history of Italian elections since 1994 on when for the first time we got Forza Italia with a very similar coalition when the first time Forza Italia uh, got uh, got the, uh, the government in 94, you got, you got him, Lega and Alleanza Nazionale, which basically is the same uh, the, the same kind of, of, of people that, that were with Giorgia Meloni. Um, so in the end of the day, it is the same people. If you look at the government that is being formed, and here I go to the, to the government side, if you look at the government that is being formed, is very much, I wouldn't say a replica, a, a total replica of the governments of Berlusconi, one, two, three, but it is very, very similar. It is not, it's really not a case that Giorgio Meloni was in the government of Berlusconi back in 2006, 2007. So um, there is this first element that uh, of reading of what's, what's now on the table is like, beware of, of saying this is the same thing of uh, Orban winning the elections or, or the Kaczynski brothers in, in Poland, even though the party of Giorgia Meloni is obviously in the family, in the ECR family. So it is uh, part of the, conservative, of, of the conservative family where those parties are born. But this coalition is very much the old saying that that I mean like the people are the same it's like the same people that some of the people were in 94 were Ignazio La Russa which was uh, I mean he uh, was in the government of Fini uh, with Fini and so on he was there since 1994. Now what is different what is different is that uh, Giorgia Meloni uh, is indeed a novelty uh, she is indeed someone that uh, has a specific history, which cannot be ignored. So the, the, the fact that she comes directly from, and it is the first time that a party that uh, has some in the genealogy, even, even far away, as, as, uh, is coming from, from, from the far right and, and the fascist party, that's definitely something that, uh, that, that is new. Uh, however, it's not new in the sense that since 1994, these people have had uh, minister, ministers, have been swearing the Italian constitutions. What I'm trying to say, they have been normalized in the Italian. So if you see it from, from an Italian perspective, this has been very much not a novelty. And, and if you speak with, with people, they, they don't see this as a shocking thing, at least, at least as a coalition. But of course, if you go and see about the personal history of some of these people, you might dig into more uh, complicated past, and 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 that 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 is worrying to a certain extent. So so what I want to say here is that uh, what what to look ahead, and it's like more like the the, the final part of, of of the presentation. What to look ahead? I think that uh, in, in her speech uh, at the lower chamber today, uh, this week, uh, Giorgia Meloni made it very clear that uh, she is going to be uh, honoring uh, Italian international positioning when it comes to uh, NATO, when it comes to the European Union, when it comes to the position of the Euro. So I personally don't see any risk in this moment especially because it has been very clear, very clear about uh, the, uh, the, 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 the way the, um, uh, the, the, the very complicated uh, situation we have, economically speaking and, uh, and politically speaking, uh, they've been very, very careful to, to be making big statements. So on, on this front, I see very much a continuity with the Draghi government. And they, you, you might have seen Draghi's action at the last European Council and last weeks has been somehow hinting at that as well. You know, Also the position of Italy into this world energy thing uh, about asking for a price cap has been quite specific. Draghi has been himself, you know, like there is some national interest, I would say at the moment, which goes beyond the, 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 the left and right divide. And I think this is going to, to go on. Where we are going to see a problem or like conflict is going to be 
on the same old kind of things. I mean, you, you see on the economic side, there have been, again, statements that could have been made by Berlusconi in 1994. He wants to have a flat tax. He wants to uh, uh, raise the, they want to raise the, um, the level of uh, cash withdrawal, which is, you know, a very worrying signal when it comes to, uh, 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 you know, a fight against uh, tax evasion and, uh, and informal economy or illegal economy. So they are all signals that, 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 that are contradictory. On one hand, I would say this government might continue uh, things which the Draghi government has been made. I think that the commitments are there. The next generation EU, there will be minor adjustments, but it will, it will follow the race in which we are. There will be other things that might be more worrying when it comes to the economy, uh, making the interests, oh, but, but that's also to say, how much space there will be in the international arena to, to do that. And then there is the discourse part. That, that On the discourse part, they will do quite a lot. You know, the discourse part, that's where they can show more this kind of nationalist, like rebrand everything by being national, this kind of nationalistic uh, uh, flavor to everything. And that's where there might be more of a cultural fight. And that's, that's where Italy is as not making peace with, with its past, and I'm not sure that the way uh, the next uh, the next months are going to play out. We've been seeing already uh, something quite worrying with with a, a protest at the at the faculty at the, the political science faculty this week in Rome, where you know there's been police attacking uh, um, uh, students that wanted to to hang uh, uh, um, a banner saying that they didn't want fascists inside inside the the building, so I, I'm I'm seeing this level of of tension could potentially escalate uh, in in the level of of the opposition, but the problem is and and here we'll finish uh, um, the problem is that uh, on the left side, the Democratic Party is in disarray. They need to have a Congress pretty soon, but the party is completely in disarray and completely uh, drained from 11 years of, of even more of having been at the government, but without never winning an election. And this is really the problem. You know, at the end, the first words of Giorgia Meloni uh, in her speech at the, at the lower chamber this week was, uh, for the first time after 11 years, there is a government in Italy which uh, is compliant with the results of the elections, which is actually true. And this is the real problem that the Italians probably wanted to signal with, this, with these elections. They, they've been fed up with electing uh, people, but not really having a clear indication about uh, whom is going to govern. So from that point of view, uh, George Meloni got it right. I mean, like this is really the first the first government in in many many years, actually since the last Berlusconi government, and this is even more more symbolic if you think about it. That is elected by by uh, by 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 the people, and the big fight will be over the constitutional reform. Like uh, she will try to change the constitution and make it a, a presidential uh, republic. And that will also be, I think, that one of the big, you know, like more than maybe on the economics, where she will be conservatives, pro-business, but pretty much pro-European in the end of the day. I think the big fight will be uh, the constitutional reform and on the, let's say, more cultural stuff. I would like to stop here because I know that I put a lot of things on the fire and uh, I could speak forever when it comes to Italian politics. So uh, I hand the words to you, Barry, and I'm pretty sure that there will be some questions.